On today's show, we're going to show you how to make one of these cool lithophane lamps. Stick around. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm here with you every Wednesday and Saturday night. Be sure to join us on Saturdays for our live streams, where every Saturday we engage with you guys and answer your questions about 3D printing. So, what are we doing today? Well, we're talking about lithophanes, and we're going to make this wonderful lithophane lamp today, and I want to show you what this looks like. What is a lithophane? Well, it's a stereolithographic image. And a 3D printer can uh, actually make your images look amazing when you apply light behind them. So this is the lamp that we're going to make today. We're not going to use this lampshade. We're going to do something a little bit more apple pie. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to make one of these. Uh, there's a great thread on Reddit. We're going to put all the links down below so that you guys can go ahead and make your own over on Reddit. Uh, I just want to switch to that now and uh, show you exactly where we got this. We got this idea from the Star Wars Lithophane Lampshade, um, well worth a 34-hour print time. So this is not something that's going to uh, take a little bit of time. It's going to take a lot of time. But we're going to show you what filament we're going to use today. And I just want to kind of run you through this. So if you read through this, there's links and everything that you need to get uh, into making this lithophane for yourself. And uh, then there are some images that allow you to uh, set up the lithophane. We're going to talk a little bit more about those as we go through. And then, of course, the lithophane itself. There's a quick little preview for you. So what are we using for our filament today? Well, we're going to use... Spool 3D Canada's white. This is from uh, their new collection of shades. These are all Pantone colored. And this is the first time you guys are getting to see this on camera. I'm going to open one of these and show you what's inside. First, you're going to notice that you get a bag. Now, this is a resealable bag that you can put your filament in when you're not using it. And that is a great addition to the Spool 3D filament. Now we'll just pull the filament out. The filament is very nicely wound. i got to tell you, I really like this stuff because it is almost perfectly wound. And it also comes with a little indicator on there. I'll try and get a close-up of this later for you. Um, the indicator actually shows you how much filament you have left. And then, of course, it gives you all the temperatures that you need for your nozzle and for your bed. And I know through practice exactly what temperatures I'm going to print at today. So, let's go ahead and open this. Because it's a brand new filament. We have a tool that will allow us to let the air in. We'll just open that right up. Toss that down into the garbage. And inside, you're going to notice you have a desk and pack. Keep this desk and pack. What I'm going to suggest you do is take your bag that you got, and you're just going to open that up. And we're just going to toss that in to that bag. So there we go. You've got the desk in there. It's going to stay nice and dry. Is seal up that bag. We're just going to put that off to the side. We'll get to that later. I really like the way this is wound now. The new filament that uh, fill or uh, Spool 3D has been bringing in is amazingly well wound. So there's not a lot of wastage. It's not brittle, as you can see. Normally, you can almost get that to snap off. Oh, look at that. Took quite a bit to get it there. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to load this into our machine. And uh, then I'm going to run you through how I made the lithophane. So we've got our filament loaded. 
beautiful white filament from spool3d.ca and now we're going to cut over to the computer and I'm going to show you where this whole process started and where we got the idea for this. So as you can see we're over on Reddit and I will put all these links down in the description below and this basically is a recipe for making this. Now the Star Wars lithophane lampshade well worth the 34 hour print time. That's where we got the idea to do this. You can see there's some links and the photo that they used uh, and there's even a little YouTube video uh, and then you can see some other people's prints. So what we want to do now is we want to basically get our image prepared. Now we've already pre-prepared our image um, and here is uh, 3D P rocks slash lithophane. Um, this is a website where you go to take your image and make it into a lithophane. It's very easy. It's free to do. So what we're going to do first and foremost is we're going to grab an image. So we have to go to the image tab right here and we will open that up. We're going to choose our image and in this case we're going to use one that we pre-prepared. This is Captain America. Captain America throws his mighty shield. There we go. And that's exactly what he's doing. This is uh, Chris Evans' as Captain America. We've turned it into black and white. And it's fairly easy to do if you've got Photoshop. Um, it's a, it'll be another tutorial that I give you a little bit later on. Uh, what we want to do first and foremost, you can see there's several different ideas uh, for different shapes of lithophanes down here. Uh, you can go with a flat one, an inner curve, an outer curve, a cylinder, and all kinds. So what we want to do is we need to go to an outer curve. So if we refresh this, you can see that it's going to change our lithophane to an outer curve. And there we go. So we can see our lithophane. We can uh, zoom out and... I've already preset some stuff in here, so I'm going to take you inside the settings and I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. So we go up to our settings and we're first going to start with our model settings. So here we are in the model settings and this is where we're going to start. Here you'll see that we have our maximum size in millimeters. We want to make sure that we set that to 440 millimeters. That's going to be the right size for our lithophane. Our thickness is going to be 2.5. Now, these numbers here, if we tried to put in, let's say 3.5, it wouldn't allow us to. It would go to the next highest number. So what we want to do is we want to bring this all the way back down. We're going to get into our range. By using the left and right arrow keys, we can go by a point number. So in this case, we want to be down to 2.5. Our border will be zero. Our thinnest layer in millimeters will be 0.5. And that's because we're using that newfangled update that Brian gave us a few weeks ago and uh, for our Cura. And we're going to use Cura to slice this. Our vectors per pixel are four. And we're going to move down to our base standard depth of zero. And this is very important that we want to use the curve and that's going to be 360 is our curve so we get something that goes completely around now let's go back to the top here and the next thing that we want to look at is the image settings so the image settings are actually pretty uh, simple to do you want to make sure that everything is off with the exception of manual refresh so we're going to make sure that the refresh is on image click and our flip image should be off, our mirror image should be off. Now we want to make this a positive. When we first see this, it's all the way over to the negative. If we do that, you're going to have some aberrations and your print is going to look more like a negative instead of a positive image. So we want to make sure that that is set to positive image. The rest of this, we're just going to leave it just like it is. And we are going to return back to our model and we'll refresh here say OK it had a typeface error but it's going to refresh for us so back here on our image or on our model page we can see that we have 
a lithophane all the way around, 360 degrees. We can zoom in and have a closer look. We can move the image around a little bit. So we can see all different sides of it. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to go ahead and download that image to wherever you like. Now we've already pre-downloaded it as the cap litho image. And so we're not going to have to download it again. Now we're going to head over to Cura. We're going to import it into Cura. Set it up as a G-coded uh, piece of file and then send it off to our printer. Alright, so here we are in Cura 4.0 with the Cree Awesome mod that Brian put on. You can see that's right up here uh, by our Ender 3. Now we're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, some generic PLA. In this case, we're using that fantastic white from Spool 3D. Now I've gone in and I've made a couple of changes here. I want dynamic quality. So I'm putting mine to that 1.6. If we push this down, you can see that I'm at 0 0.16 millimeter layer height. So it's going to give me a really nice litho. Now I could certainly go to two if I just want it to go really fast or I could go super fine at uh, 0 0.12. Now I may do that because this is a pretty cool uh, lithophane but for the most part I think that 1.6 is going to do us just fine. So we are going to keep the changes. What we want to make sure of is that we have no top layers and no bottom layers. No, we're going to leave that exact three, two, one. Now, as far as the shell quality goes, we're going to leave this exactly the way that it is. We're not going to change any of that. We do want to make sure, though, that our infill is set to 100%. We've already gone ahead and done that for you. We don't need any support on this. And we certainly, uh, well, we could use a little bit of a raft, and we might. That might be a good idea, but in this case, I don't think so. I've printed a couple of these already, and I think they're just fine. So let's go ahead and load in our lithophane. So let's go ahead and load in our STL, and that is right here that we created. So there is our lithophane. Let's have a quick peek around. We can see that it's hollow. And we can have a look around. There's Captain America's face, just exactly the way that we want it. So we're going to let that slice. We'll have a look at the preview once it's finished slicing. So let's go ahead and look at that preview now. It'll process it. See, it's going to take one day, six hours, and 31 minutes. Um, having a look here at our lithophane let's uh, move it around look at that it does look amazing now if we go ahead over here and we can have a look to see if we're getting that uh, exact amount of infill that we asked it for we can go ahead and tilt that down and we're just going to zoom in a little bit on that edge and you can see that it is filling it in quite nicely so go ahead now and save that to your SD card Take that SD card over to your Ender or whatever printer you're using and let's start printing off a lithophane. So after about 36 hours and change, we have ourselves a lithophane. And uh, we're going to show it to you right here. We'll just go there and we'll spin it the right way. Let's hold the base so we don't... Uh... And this is our Captain America. Happy 4th of July, everybody. What's more American than Captain America's butt? I'm only saying that because that's what they said in the movie. Yeah, America's ass. that's America's ass. So the lithophane didn't turn out too bad, except for right here. Let me go on the front. You can see where we had a, 
Our printer stopped on us, but because we have that brand new board in there with the silent steppers, the um, firmware has the uh, power off feature turned on. So we had to restart the print at this point, and that's why we have a little bit of under extrusion there, um, and then a little bit of over extrusion. But it, it quickly corrected itself. I'm perfectly happy with the way that came out. I'd be happy to put that on my bedside table. Well, maybe I'll put it on my wife's side. She's a big fan of Chris Evans. So that's all there is to doing a lithophane in, or in, uh, what did we do that in? We did that in Cura, I believe. We did that one in Cura 4.0. So that's all there is to doing that in Cura 4.0. Pretty simple stuff. Um, I hope that you got something out of today's tutorial and showing you exactly uh, how to do a uh, lithophane uh, for a lamp. And this is an Ikea lamp. We'll have links to all of the stuff that uh, we use down in the description below so you can go and check it out for yourself. Go to Ikea, get a $10 lamp, put a bulb in it. You're off to the races. So there you go. Thanks to everybody in the studio today. We've got Jess and Brian both in the studio today. There we go. Yay! Helping out, driving me crazy. <laughs> but that's what they do all the time. That, that's their job. It's driving me crazy. So we want to thank Spool 3D for allowing us to uh, sample their new uh, white filament with the Pantone color. And uh, I think it came out really nice. We've got a, a warm white bulb in there. That's why it kind of looks a little on the yellow side. But um, all of our studio lights are all daylight balanced, but this one is not. So it looks a little yellow, but when you get it home, it will look just fine. So uh, make sure that you uh, print one of those off for yourself. Make all kinds of different lithophanes using the techniques that we showed you in today's tutorial. So Spool 3D again, thank you for the white filament. And thank you again for the studio space in which you provide us each and every week to bring you guys this show. They have everything that you need from filaments to printers and all the accessories uh, that you need for your next build or upgrade. Check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool 3D. Well, that's my time for today. I am out of here. I am going to go and relax for the rest of the day, I think. I'm pretty sure I am, yeah. And we'll see you guys again on Saturday night when Brian and I come together to answer your questions about 3D printing. Join us at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And don't forget that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.